hire me. Um, so yes, we're going to talk about effective leadership strategies and how you can bring out the best in others regardless of your position of power. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a behavioral scientist, actually a uh, board certified behavior analyst. Um, I've been in the field for about 16 years. And I'm um, currently starting my own company and working with um, organizations and schools to work on improving workplace um, cultures. Um, so, um, like many of us here today, I've had to overcome many obstacles in my life and in my field. Um, and so some of the hurdles that I have to jump through and over every day are uh, hurdles now that I'm jumping for for others. Um, I've had to overcome many obstacles in life and in my field um, in regards to um, sexism and sexual harassment in the workplace. Um, and so today we're going to talk about some tools that you can take with you and implement into your everyday lives. Um, Okay, great. So we're going to talk about leadership through the lens of behavior analysis. And so an introduction into behavior analysis um, encompasses the learning and motivational uh, theories to produce measurable changes in individuals and group behaviors. The goal is to systematically change socially significant behavior, not to change behaviors because they're annoying or they're odd, this is to change behavior that's going to impact your individual personal life. So we're going to break it down. Um, this is how we analyze um, behaviors in individuals and organizations through three terms. Um, antecedents are triggers or prompts. They're the who or what or where when things are going on. The behaviors are anything a person does that includes covert actions like thinking. And then the consequences are immediately following your behavior. So are you being punished or rewarded for what you just engaged in? Um, and so an example would be, um, you go to your office, the door is locked, and you scream. Somebody comes to the door and opens the door. Your behavior was just reinforced. The screaming behavior was reinforced. So the chances of you engaging in that behavior again are likely. Um, you might text someone. You might ring the bell. All of those are different behaviors that you can engage in that you may try. And if it works for you, you will probably try those behaviors again in the future. So what behavior analysts like to do is partition the stream of interactions, those A, B, and Cs that are happening within our environment. And we look at why. Why is someone choosing to do that? Why is someone sitting and yawning right now? Why is someone getting up and leaving? So we look at people's behaviors and we will analyze the past behaviors to, in order to predict the future. Um, and so why do we do it? We do it to better understand interactions and future interactions. And by studying these interactions, we can empower one another through the science. So effective leaders. What is an effective leader? An effective leader leads at home, in work, and in the community. And today we're going to talk about some strategies and tools that regardless of where you are in your work environment, you can use in any interaction in any relationship that you have. So Scott Posakoff um, of 1982 asserted that leadership is behavior of one person that makes a difference in the behavior of others. Um, what leaders do is no more nor less than what any other person does. Leaders engage in these lifelong stream of interactions or exchanges like the ABCs that we just went over. These interactions occur within a seamless sequence. So when you're going about your daily routine, you're not thinking, oh, that was a prompt for me to do this or that was a trigger for me to behave in this way. These are seamless interactions. 
But what behavioral scientists do is break these components down. Um, we all have the capacity to lead. What leaders do is no different than the behaviors that you and I can exhibit right this very day. How you lead defines who you are as a person. So these are seven effective leadership tools that have been um, evidence-based practices and researched throughout uh, 30 plus years. Um, and so we're going to break them down today into some more actionable um, components. Easy way to remember is knee camps. So motivate and momentum. We're going to combine these two because they really do um, play into one another. So look at the timing of your requests, not just the time of day, not just the timing of your multiple requests, but really read the other person's behavior. Requests can be something that you might have a friend, you might want to ask them for a favor. What are you asking them to do, and are there multiple requests within that request? Um, demands requests will impact the momentum and motivation for follow through. So are you always demanding something from others? When you initiate um, an interaction with a friend or with a colleague, are you always approaching them with asking them for something? Are you interspersing the asking for giving? Listen, I want to help you. I just had like a great um, exchange with um, a few people out there during lunch, and it was so nice to be able to come up to people and for people to offer help and advice. Um, so make sure that you're interspersing the asking and giving. Also, when you're asking colleagues or friends for something, um, try and make your initial requests effortless so that you can build on smaller success. Establish yourself and pair. So you're going to make yourself approachable. You equals good stuff. Um, and I put like a little Pop-Tart there because I thought that looked good. Um, <laughs> give out a ton of positive praise for specific actions. So don't just tell someone that they're doing a good job. Tell them what they're doing that you liked. Tell them specifically what you liked about what they just did. That way they're getting specific feedback and the chances of them repeating it um, are higher. Um, and Alex, is Alex still here? Um, I really appreciated her um, presentation on, on trolling. She has a lot of behavioral science um, information within her presentation. So in terms of pairing yourself and creating momentum, um, for every corrective feedback you give, you should provide at least four positive points. Also, the way you reward others makes a lasting change. Consistent communication. Some of these are obvious to us. Sure, communication, that, that obviously, you know, you're working with other people, there's going to be communication involved, but we often forget to be proactive in moments. And there are various ways you can communicate with people, verbal and nonverbal language, the gestures, how you approach people, how you look at people, how you welcome people. Um, show active engagement. This is very important because just because you're communicating and you're um, interacting with someone, the way that you um, respond non-verbally signals to the other person how you are uh, perceiving the information. So again, don't always communicate um, problems. Really establish a relationship with the other person. Um, I love this quote, listen to understand, not to respond. I think a lot of times when we're listening to what other people have to say, we're very quick to respond, react, and give our opinion without really hearing what the other person is saying and really listening to their point of view. Advocate for others. This is very important, especially right now, especially after a very divisive election season. It's very important that we have communities like AlterConf, um, and it's very important that we advocate and lift each other up. 
Um, you want to cheer your colleagues on, even if they're in direct competition with you. Um, speak up for others. Um, be aware of each person's uh, threshold. Model standing up for others in front of others. So, you know, it's, it's great that you can um, speak up for someone in a private situation, but also be the person who speaks up in front of other people. You can start a chain reaction this way. Perspective taking, another great tool. So, can you look at yourself objectively? You're going to check in with yourself and self-evaluate throughout the day. You're gonna put yourself on stage and you're gonna try and view yourself as the audience member while you're analyzing how you're interacting with people. Are you able to separate yourself from what you're doing in that moment and really say, oh, okay, I can see how maybe I came across that way. Or, you know, maybe the language that I used probably wasn't inclusive. So look at yourself from someone else's perspective. Again, be the audience and look at yourself as if you were on stage. Shaping and reinforcement. So you're gonna praise and reward any small approximation towards the goal. Reinforcement must mean something to the person receiving it. So the longer you wait to tell someone, you know what, you did a great job with that, the less effective it is. Make the delivery of reinforcement frequent. If you're reinforcing correctly, it will never be too much. Rewards should be contingent and earned when the task is completed and directed. Any interaction without the use of gifts that lets the performer know that they are valued. This could be public recognition, a card, an announcement, a verbal interaction in person. Um, the, when you have meetings, um, there was a study that was done that um, showed that um, women, when they were participating or engaging in meetings, weren't always often heard. So little things um, that you can do to support one another in meetings is reiterate what that person said, especially if it's a really good idea. Oh, you know, I heard um, so-and-so say this, and I really think that's a great idea. Can we hear more from that person? Um, so, I actually did have some leadership maps um, that I was going to hand out to all of you, but I didn't realize that we were going to have this large of a crowd. Um, so I'm happy to send um, something over to Ash, but if you can think about some of the tools that I uh, talked about today, and just for a second, just so we can all like self-reflect and self-evaluate, I think it's important after all of these amazing people are speaking today that we think about really what they're saying and how we can um, apply it to our, our lives. If you could choose one tool today that you can practice every day because practice makes permanence, not perfection. Um, so again, don't forget to look at the data and look at your past history and how you're impacting others. Um, and if you can today say hello to someone, maybe choose a partner, share with them some things that you might try and implement in your, in your life moving forward, and connect with them. We need, um, we need more support and we need to lift each other up right now. Some references and then thank you. Um, invest in yourself, be the trigger that changes the world. And now is your chance to use the hurdles that you are faced with every day to be the prompt that you need to jump for yourself and for others. And that's it.